Pasadena police officers find themselves under investigation, the devastating impact of alcoholism on kids and families, and the economy's effect on our local small businesses. All this and much more next on CCN Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood, seconds away. Do you have a great business idea? The Pasadena Enterprise Zone can help. Pasadena Enterprise Zone, open for business. Hi, I'm Jesse Avila at the Convalescent Aid Society, a nonprofit organization established in 1923. We provide the free loan of durable medical equipment, of hospital beds, wheelchairs, walkers, canes, and many other items. Your donations and contributions are welcome and greatly appreciated. We are located at 3255 East Foothill Boulevard in Pasadena. We're, We're here, here to help you! you. Please give us a call and check for availability at 626-793-1696. Hello everybody, thank you for watching CCN Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood. I'm Tammy Devine. Sunita Joshua Madison is off today. Our top story, a couple of Pasadena police officers find themselves under investigation for alleged misconduct. The charges are something the attorney for the family of 19-year-old Kendrick McDade uh, killed in an officer-involved shooting in March, says is often swept under the rug. CCN's Paulo Alejandria joins us live with more on this story. Hi, Paulo. Hi, a little Sam. bit of turmoil for the police department right now. Yeah, ever since the officer-involved shooting, the scrutiny, that it seems to have been weighing under them. Yeah. The Pasadena Police Department has faced some trouble these past few months following the officer-involved shooting death of Kendrick McDade. In March, Officer Kevin Okamoto is now under investigation for allegedly covering up evidence in an unrelated criminal investigation. His former partner, Detective Keith Gomez, is also under investigation for allegedly threatening the life of a murder suspect. Uh, we spoke to the McDade's family's attorney, Carrie Harper, and she says some actions by the Pasadena Police Department seem to be condoned or overlooked by the department. Nearly three months have passed since this 911 call in which Oscar Carrillo falsely stated that two men threatened him with a firearm. The call led to a string of events that led to the officer-involved shooting death of 19-year-old Kendrick McDade late in the evening of March 24th. Looking in the face of parents whose hearts have been ripped out of their chest, and if it doesn't break your heart somewhat, it should, uh, because you just look at them and this the child was their whole world and um, it's just a needless death. The high-profile death of the teenager put a degree of scrutiny on the practices and conduct of Pasadena's police officers. Now, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department is investigating two unrelated allegations of misconduct of two Pasadena police officers. Any employee with the Pasadena Police Department, if an allegation is made, even if it's frivolous, we must, inve we must investigate it, and we will do that each and every time. The LASD's investigation into the alleged misconduct of Officer Kevin Akimoto stems from a 2010 brawl that took place in front of this Volcano restaurant on South Fair Oaks Avenue. Police charged bouncer Edward Damas with felony battery of the restaurant's DJ. The trial ended with a hung jury. The allegations against Akimoto include the withholding of information that would have helped Damas in his trial. Akimoto's former partner and longtime PPD veteran, Detective Keith Gomez, is himself the subject of an investigation in which he allegedly threatened the life of Jamal Harvey, while Harvey was a suspect in a murder investigation. Harvey was acquitted of those charges in 2008. Carrie Harper, the attorney for the family of Kendrick McDade, named Detective Gomez in the federal lawsuit she filed against the city of Pasadena on behalf of McDade's family on April 3rd. The attorney says she is very familiar with Detective Gomez and says she's worked on numerous cases in which the detective was accused of similar acts of misconduct. It's a common occurrence that the allegations are uh, Mr. Gomez threatens people. I have, I've brought lawsuits against him before 
with kids who'll pull the car over and say, you better say this and that, or you're going to, you know, makes threats. And it's their word against a cop's word. And usually the cop's word rules out. And usually 90% of peace officers, I'll say it again, like I've always said, 90% of the peace officers are there to protect and serve and do their job. Mr. Gomez is not one of the 90%. Lieutenant Riddle, public information officer for the Pasadena Police Department, says that the McDade shooting and recent major incidents in no way erode the public's trust in the department. She says the PPD has been visible and forthcoming with information regarding its cases. The chief, the city manager, myself, and other department leaders have been out in the community nonstop, and we have been received. We had some limitations, but we have been forthcoming. We've been to Jackie Robinson Center twice. We've had a community meeting. Harper has made some amendments in the lawsuit against the city of Pasadena, which now includes Lieutenant Falente Riddle. When asked about being named in the lawsuit, Lieutenant Riddle told us she feels that she and Detective Gomez were named in the suit without any basis. She says that, like everything else, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that lawsuit. Uh, no word yet on when the trial will, if, if a trial or when it will take place. Tammy, back to you. All right, Paulo, thank you for that report. Now, Paulo also tells us that the McDade family is still really struggling with the loss of Kendrick. Harper says she has brought in a world-renowned forensics expert in this case and that she's the lead of a team of attorneys working on the McDade family's behalf in this federal civil rights lawsuit against the city of Pasadena. Uh, in other news, many of us hear on the news about the devastating impact of alcohol and alcoholism, but for some it hits very close to home. We learned one man's story during an event at the Pasadena Recovery Center, which some of you may know, houses Dr. Re Dr. Drew's rehab reality shows. CCN's TK Trinidad was at the event, and she joins us now live with more about this. Hi, TK. Hi, what was it like? It was an amazing experience. Um, Jerry Moe is the vice president and national director of the Children's Program at the famous Betty Ford Center. He gave a presentation on Friday during which he spoke candidly about how alcoholism nearly destroyed his family. Now he works with kids of alcoholics to help them stay away from some of these problems he faced as a child. Jerry Mo says growing up with an alcoholic father has shaped who he is today. He often recalls the times his father didn't come home following one of his drunken binges. I remember I was six years old and it was Christmas Eve. And Christmas Eve in our family was when we opened you know, the majority of our presents and there'd be something under the tree for Christmas Day. And I'm the youngest. And it was, it was a night where my father never came home. Alcoholism was common in Mo's family. His mother's parents died of alcoholism. He says he more than likely would have fallen into the same trap of addiction, but at 14 years old, he went to a children's program which helps families cope with alcoholic family members. He says the program changed his life. For me, at the age of 14, I started to attend 12-step meetings. And the first 12-step program I participated in was Alateen. And that's a program for boys and girls who, again, love someone who has a problem with alcohol or drugs. Jerry Moe has written over 19 books and has dedicated 34 years of his life helping families deal with addiction. The Pasadena Recovery Center has been around for 12 years and has treated over 6,000 patients. You have to be educated on the illness and our job here is to provide a field um, where there is an opportunity to get better. Pasadena Recovery Center CEO Michael Bloom says the center helps those struggling with addiction to focus on healing for the long term. It's not a quick fix, but having the facility here does give people a chance to be away from their family for a month, sort some things out, and hopefully uh, make some better choices. Mo says alcohol and drug addiction can be genetic, but that it can also be triggered in children of addicts through environment, stress, and unpredictability. He says his goal and that of the Betty Ford Children's Program where he works is to help break the cycle. If we educate kids at a young age, that if we give them opportunities to talk openly about what's going on, to learn problem-solving skills, self-care skills, who to go to for help, and and we give them these mechanisms that when they face challenges in their life, and hey, we all face challenges, but they might have some other strategies to turn to instead of turning to alcohol or drugs. 
Jerry Moe is married and the father of three kids. His father has since passed away but died 38 years sober. Through Alateen, Moe was able to cope with his father's alcoholism and learned how to break his family's cycle of addiction. He wonders what difference it would have made, though, if he had known how to handle his father's alcohol alcoholism as a younger child at 7, 8, or 9 years old. And that's partly why he works with kids at the Betty Ford Center and also travels around the world helping kids. Tammy, back to you. All right. Thank you for that report, TK. For more information on how to heal when the whole family is affected by addiction, you can visit the BettyFordCenter.org or PasadenaRecoveryCenter.com. Uh, CCN Snapshots and what small businesses are doing to survive tough economic times. That's coming up next. Also, CCN Weather with meteorologist Curtis Peaks. That's next on CCN Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Zarif, and I'm excited about sharing with you three important tips for better sleep, better rest. Are you ready for this? Now, if you're one of the 25 million or more people who are having a problem, I'm going to give you these tips that you can live by. Number one, reduce the amount of food at the end of your day. Instead of having that large dinner, have a smaller meal, something like a lettuce salad, nice, fresh, crispy salad, and some tea, you know, green tea, nice and warm, or you can have a hot cereal. See, I know Hot cereal, yeah, hot cereal has tryptophan in it. Tryptophan is converted to serotonin, and serotonin helps you to get into a deeper sleep. Number two, let's eat all whole grains. Whole grains, yeah, whole grains. None of the stuff that is refined or commercial foods, and it's usually stripped. So white rice, white sugar, white flour, you get it, right? Any of those things, they are too condensed. So we want the whole wheat products, again, that's loaded with tryptophan to help you to get into a deeper rest. And lastly, the time. Allow at least three hours after you eat your meal to sleep. In other words, don't eat and go straight to bed. This has been Dr. Zarif with tips for better health. Now, here's a snapshot of a couple of other stories that happened this week right here in the San Gabriel Valley. First, Pasadena police are investigating a shooting that happened early this past Saturday morning in the 800 block of North Summit Avenue. After a 911 call of shots fired, investigators say they found a man with multiple gunshot wounds. Emergency crews took the victim to a local hospital. Police say the only description, police said at the time that the only description they had of the man was that he's an African American male in his 20s. They have since arrested a suspect in that case. Uh, authorities are asking anyone with any further information on this case to give them a call at 626-744. 4241 or visit lacrimestoppers.org and click on submit a web tip. Uh, but, but they do have someone in custody for that now. Also on Saturday, Pasadena firefighters rescued three dogs and four birds from a house fire in the 1900 block of Newport Avenue around 1 p.m. Neighbors called 911 when they saw smoke coming from the house and they told emergency crews that the residents were not at home at the time. Firefighters took about 20 minutes to put out the flames in the attic, which caused about $110,000 worth of damages. A neighbor offered to take in the pets until the residents came home. Authorities say contractors working on the roof may have caused that fire. As the economy remains sluggish, many small businesses are finding ways to reinvent themselves to keep from going under. The North Lake Village Business Association is a nonprofit that works with local small businesses to help improve an area of town that some say is a bit overlooked. NLVBA President Ron Carter joins us live with more on this story. Thanks so much for going on camera with us, Ron. Thank you're you an old me. friend of the show. Uh, you you're, you're a veteran of the show. You appreciate it. How tough is it out there for small businesses right now, would you say? It is. It is very tough uh, with the economy just showing some green shoots. It's it's very difficult. A lot of businesses are having a very difficult time trying to meet payroll. Some of them are 
have to cut back on employees and you know that's very difficult and a very difficult environment now but yeah. there's a lot of opportunities also yeah there are opportunities out there because you have to kind of get creative at a time like this don't you think you have to figure out ways to to Correct. bring business to you exactly and, you know. exactly i was going to say that that's one of the things <laughs> i was going to say you, you, you're right in my head uh, i i think that uh the, one of the most important things that small businesses can do or any business can do right now is really focus on not being invisible you know when when these times are tough you really have to go out and find your customers. You have to find out who your audience is and what are you trying to sell them, and, and more importantly, why you're selling them, what, what you're trying to sell them. Yeah, and one creative way that you are doing it through the NLVBA is with um, an event you have coming up this week. Is that right, on Thursday? Uh, yeah, uh, actually it's next Thursday. Oh. It's on the 28th, Thursday the 28th of June. We're having a, a business mixer for all the businesses in the area. We have one of our new businesses that has opened in the area, uh, Next Door Cafe, and, and the cafe is doing very well, and so we're having a mixer there. We're inviting the community and also all the small businesses in the area to come out and support and get to know the businesses. Also, one of the key things we're going to be doing at this event is uh, we're in an enterprise zone area, and so the city will be there to give out information about enterprise zones, uh, how uh, benef uh, benefits uh, are available for small businesses, for employees they might hire, and a lot of uh, businesses don't know that. Yeah. Well, and you're a, you're a big-time PR guy here yeah. uh, in Pasadena and throughout the L.A. area. Um, uh, what are you doing? Like, what, what do you have going on? What's, uh, how, how are you staying creative to keep your small business going well? Well, one of the things I'm doing is I am uh, I'm, I'm a blogger. I've become a blogger. Yes. I've, came to, I've come to your side of the, <laughs> your side of the yeah. room, and so I consider myself somewhat of a journalist now. And uh, because of my blog, I'm getting a lot of notoriety. Uh, you know, I get people that correspond with me on a daily, sometimes weekly basis. I have people who are following me. And so I'm using the blog to let people know about the other businesses that I have. So and, that's one of the things I'm yeah, doing. Yeah, and that is very smart. And I always say to everybody that if you have not jumped onto the social media network uh, bandwagon, it's time. Yes. It's beyond time, it isn't really it? Is. Thank you so much, Ron, for going on camera with us. Sure. The Business Mixer is next Thursday, June 28th at 6 o'clock at the Next Door Cafe. Appreciate you going on camera with us. Thank you. The June gloom burned off in the morning to reveal beautiful, sunny skies all week long. Long, but is that going to remain? CCN meteorologist Curtis Peak is here live with the answer. Hi, Curtis. Well, that June gloom is going to remain in the mornings and it is going to burn off along the coast. We are still going to see that uh, stratus clouds, that low lying clouds. They are not going to see much sunshine. Good evening, Pasadena and uh, San Gabriel Valley. Let's get you going outside right now. As we take a look at our satellite right now, as we can see, we have had those stratus clouds. They have kind of moved back out to the Pacific along the coast. They still are there, but that those clouds will We'll come back tomorrow morning and we will see uh, some stratus clouds, low lying clouds into the San Gabriel Valley, the San Fernando Valley. This is what we need to look at for later in the week. This upper level low is going to come in. It is going to sit off the coast of Oregon right here, which is going to give us probably a great weekend. So uh, if you are planning on going out this weekend, be prepared because we are going to see a little more of the stratus clouds, that low-lying clouds, a great weekend. As we take a look at our almanac right now, as we see, we do have a high today of 85 degrees. Our low tonight is going to be 61 degrees. Our normal right now is about 81 degrees. We are four degrees above where we should be, one degree where we're going to, four degrees where we should be tonight. Also, as I said earlier, that June gloom is still here. But guess what? We do have our summer solstice. Summer does begin on Wednesday. Uh, Mother Nature has a way of working it out. We are not going to see much of those stratus clouds on Wednesday, but we are going to see a beautiful day. So summer is here. But as I said earlier, we are going to see a great weekend due to that upper level low sitting off the coast of Oregon. Right now outside, we do have 79 degrees. Our winds are out in the southwest at 7 miles per hour. Our sunrise tomorrow morning is going to be at 541, and our sunset tonight is going to be at 807. Our overnight lows right now, we are seeing 50s and 60s across the board. Pasadena, you are going to come in at 61 degrees. Monrovia, 58 degrees tucked along the uh, mountains that right there. And West Covina, 
59 degrees. Our highs for tomorrow. We are going to see Pasadena coming to 83 degrees. Alhambra 78. 70s and 80s across the board. Here's that seven day forecast that I love doing for you. We have right now 83 degrees is going to be tomorrow. As I said earlier, we are going to see on our first day of summer 88 degrees. A richer high pressure is going to come in very briefly. But by Thursday, that richer high pressure is going to break back down. We are going to see another low that's going to come in. So 85 degrees on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and 86 on Monday. Our overnight lows is going to be sixes across the board, except for next Monday night, which we are going to see 59 degrees. So, Tammy, June gloom is going to stick around for the rest of June. Yeah, but th you cannot beat the 85s across the board. I love That's that. beautiful. 85. I love Southern California weather. That's for so sure. So do I. <laughs> All right. Well, the Wow Jam Pasadena is coming up. Are you ready? It'll be hosted by half of a legendary duo, and it's designed to win over the world. That's next on CCN Crown City News. Your your news, your neighborhood. We'll be right back. If your child is getting behind in school and needs help organizing, reading, writing, or studying, Klein's classes can help. Audrey Klein has been teaching for more than 20 years. Her book, Skills for Student Success, can teach your child essential learning tools. Klein's classes are affordable and conveniently available online. You can view the lessons and educational films anytime. I've seen children jump two reading levels in one year. I've proven it over and over again. Don't let another semester pass without getting your child some help. Visit Klein'sClasses.com and get started today. Unleash your inner shark. Sharky Zartman's book, Shark Sense, reveals the 14 life-changing steps you can take today to start reaching your goals. Through her witty yet no-nonsense approach, Sharky Zartman unlocks the lessons we can all learn from sharks. I use the shark as a symbol for your inner source of strength and power, the part of you that doesn't know the meaning of the word can't. Stop settling for less and start living with confidence and purpose. Order Shark Sense today at SharkSense.org and get in touch with your inner shark. Shake your groove thing and reunite it and it be Okay, I'll stop singing. <laughs> but don't act like you don't know that song. Uh, those songs are from Peaches and Herb. And coming up uh, towards the end of June through July 22nd, one half of the legendary duo, Peaches and Herb, Peaches, Linda Peaches Green. She's now Linda Tavani. Uh, her, along with her husband, Stephen Tavani, will be hosting Wow Jam Pasadena. The event is sponsored by Pasadena Foursquare Church. And Max Doyle with the church is here live to tell us more about it. Thanks so much for being here, Max. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me. Yeah, no, so I, I, I said to you when you came on that you look like you're 12, but <laughs> <laughs> you're a lot older than yeah, that. And, 22. Um, yeah. yeah, you're a staff, <laughs> staff member of the church. Yes. And um, uh, you're here. Uh, it, it's the Foursquare Church, is that yes. right? Yes. Okay, Foursquare okay. Church here in Pasadena. Tell us about this Wow Jam. What was that all about? Well, basically, it's just a free party for the community. We're having uh, free haircuts, we're having free makeovers, uh, face paintings for the kids. Kids have a, uh, it's called a kid's corner and they go in and they dress up like a fire, fire uh, fighter, a policeman and take a picture of them. Um, we're giving out free TVs, iPods. It's just uh, a place where the community can come and just have a lot of fun. It sounds like a yeah. big old party. And yeah. there's gonna be lots of music, right? Definitely, I'm yes. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Tell us the connection with uh, um, Peaches of Peaches and Herb and how, how this came to be with them. Well, uh, I know her as Linda, but uh -huh. uh, Linda and, and Steven, uh, for the last 20 years, they've been going to uh, all over the, the, the country in Detroit, um, New Orleans, and they just go out and they do this thing called Wow Jam. And uh, they actually attend our church. And uh, they just, you know, brought the idea, hey, you want to do a Wow Jam in Pasadena? And we were all over that. So this is going to be a big party that Definitely. everybody is invited to. They're going to have a lot of fun, food, and all of that. But there's a serious side to this, too, Definitely. isn't there? Yeah. What is that serious side? We just want to show the people the love of God, and, and we just want to show them that the life that He gives. And, and it's going to be a place of peace. And it's awesome because there's going to be people from um, all over Pasadena, all over the area, um, all different uh, kinds of people, different colors, but it, we're just all there united as just human beings and just loving on each other. At 22 years old, how did you get involved with the church and and um, and have such a heart to be a part of uh, a ministry like this? Uh, it started when I was really young. 
um, around um, junior high, around like that. And uh, right now I'm actually uh, the junior high youth pastor. And um, it was due to a lot of the men in our congregation that just loved on me and showed me that there is a, a different way. I don't have to get in um, alcohol or drugs or anything like that, but there's a better way. And um, that's kind of what my role is now. And I kind of um, get to do that for my students. Yeah. So um, is this going to be your first or have you been part of the WOW Jam? Yeah, this is our uh, second time in, in Pasadena, but they've been doing it for 20 years. Now. Okay. So were you yeah. part of the first one? Yes, actually? I was. What was that like for you personally? Like just seeing all those yeah. people out there? And I it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Just there's so many people. Um, at first, you wouldn't think so many people would come, but there was literally, I think, about uh, 2,500 people that came to Villa Park. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, I was just going to ask you, uh, the different locations are going to be Villa Park. Yeah. And where else, real quick? Uh, Skid Row in Los Angeles. Okay. And uh, South also, Park in South Central. Oh, Los wow. Angeles. Okay. All right. Yeah. And people can find out more by going to wowjam.com. Uh, yes. Right? Good. And, and again, it's uh, June 25th on Monday at oh, Villa okay. Park. Okay. June 25th yeah, through July 2nd. Okay. Good. Wowjam.com. Thank you yes. so much, Max, Thank you for, for being here with us. I really appreciate it. It was time once again for Make Music Pasadena. And boy, did Pasadena make music. When we come back, you're watching CCN Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood. We'll be right back. Live, work, play, and shop in the North Lake Village. See for yourself when you visit our village. We talked a little bit about music in the last segment. And speaking of music, it's apparently a spring and summer of music here in Pasadena. We just heard about the upcoming WOW Jam that will be filled with it this past weekend. Music was in the air all over the city of Pasadena during the Make Music Pasadena Festival. CCN's Lily Nuno was there and has this report. Pasadena today. A lot of good free music. You know, you can't beat that. People out here playing in the sunshine. It's not too hot. Perfect weather. It's a very nice day today. Thousands of music lovers gathered at the seventh annual Make Music Pasadena Festival. The free 12 hour concert brought people of all ages together, including the Foster family, who say good music is what brings them to this year's music fueled event. We're from Pasadena, but we cannot miss this festival right here in town. It's House District stage in Pasadena at the Make Music Festival, hearing all different types of music from eclectic to all new sounds. Eclectic, uh, eclectic diversity in my music taste. I'm surrounded by uh, a lot of individuals that are just, just great, you know. It's all about this band because uh, I like Mulan and Luke Doom and she told me these guys were into that kind of music, so I'm here to see. The Make Music Festival brought more than 100 amateur and internationally known musicians to Pasadena venues along Colorado Boulevard and surrounding areas. Musicians like Ila Bamba, <laughs> The Grimes and Dengue Fever <laughs> rock the stage with new tunes. Sponsors across California help make the free event something to talk about. Sharon Yazowski of Levitt Pavilion says this has been the best Make Music Festival yet. What makes this event special is that it's free and it's available to everyone. So there's no ticket price, everyone can come, there's no charge barrier. And that is it for this newscast. Thank you to uh, Ron Carter and Max Doyle for going on camera with me. Thanks to all of our sponsors, including Southern California Edison, Wink Marketing, Pasadena Enterprise Center, and Dr. Farid Zarif. Thanks also to the CCN crew, and thank you for watching CCN Crown City News. Join us each week as we cover the news in Pasadena and the San Gabriel Valley. For all of us here, I'm Tammy Devine. Have a great week.